And now, it's time for Southern California's Sports Fishing Voice. Let's talk hook up. For the next two hours, join Pete Gray, Rock Cod Rick Maxa, Corey Sandin, and this week's special expert guest for fishing information, new techniques to catch more fish, and the most current scoop on what's happening in the water. Let's Talk Hookup is sponsored in part by Ford, the official truck of Let's Talk Hookup, and Shimano Rods and Reels, fish with the best. Shimano. Get ready for the fastest two hours on radio with the hosts of Let's Talk Hookup, Pete Gray, Rock Cod Rick Maxa, and Corey Sandin. Good morning, anglers, and welcome to Let's Talk Hookup. Man, it's going to be a fun show today. You've got us. That's it, man. No guests, no nothing. It's just Corey and I talking fishing, talking fun. Well, we call it talking tuna, calicos, tackle, and more. But, man, this show is all about you and great times. If you've got questions, we'd love to answer them. You want to give a trip report? You want to know about a great spot? You want to pick Corey's brain about El Salto? Whatever you want, today is the show for you. going to be a lot of fun. Pete is way today down at Palma State Cortez for our Let's Talk Hookup Fall Spectacular Tournament. We heard from him yesterday. They're having some great fishing. We might catch him today, but he's probably going fishing. You stay tuned. You're in for a great one. It's Southern California's Sport Fishing Voice. Let's Talk Hookup on the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio, which is home of the Padres and Mets today at 4 o'clock. More Let's Talk Hookup coming your way on the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. You've heard all about it. You know the anglers catching fish have it. So what's holding you back? It's a fact. Fishdope.com really does help you catch more fish and burn less fuel. Fishdope.com is the only fish finding service with a spotter plane along with a crew of top anglers on the water almost every day that report actual locations and catches. You can get daily catch reports from Point Conception to San Martin Island 365 days a year. Fishdope.com is for everyone. Whether you have your own boat, fish on your friend's boat, or a sport boat, Fishdope.com has online planning tools, moon phase, tides, hot bite icons, and more. So bottom line is, if you don't have fishdope.com, well, you're probably missing a lot of bites. Membership costs less than $50 of gas, and that's for the entire year. That's right, one year. What a bargain. Plus, use the special code to save $20 on a new fishdope.com membership. Check it out today. Fishdope.com. Catch more fish, burn less fuel. The future comes standard at your San Diego County Ford dealers, so swing on by and check out the legendary Ford F-150, the smart and capable Ford Ranger, and the all-new Ford Bronco Sport. New inventory is arriving daily, and your San Diego County Ford dealer is here to help you build and order the truck or SUV of your dreams. Want to make sure you get the right truck to tow your boat? They'll help you order the right configuration to meet your needs. Want to make sure you get the right SUV to haul your gear on your next adventure? They've got you covered there, too. Escape, Edge, Bronco Sport, Explorer, and Expedition. They've got the SUV that's perfect for you. If it isn't on the lot, they'll order it and get you exactly what you need. They want your trade. So swing by your nearest San Diego County Ford dealer or visit buyfordnow.com to see all the great deals. They'll be glad to hook you up. Saturday, November 5th, it's Tackle Day at Fisherman's Landing in San Diego, and it's our largest sale ever. Plenty of seminars by saltwater experts and over 20 reps from tackle manufacturers like Accurate, Aftco, Calstar, Gamakatsu, and Costa. Don't miss all the great seminars, the huge raffle to benefit Rollo Kids, the popular casting contest, and of course, the huge sale. For the best ever tackle bargains, check out Tackle Day at Fisherman's Landing, Saturday, November 5th. All right, welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup. And man, these are the kind of shows that just uh, take their own direction and and just have fun and talk about whatever. Rick, that's kind of cool. Yeah, kind of my favorite too. Like it, it's just been a lot of fun, exactly. Because yeah, it, it goes whatever way you want it to go, and and that's what's a lot of fun. Whatever way our callers and uh, everything happens, but it's fun and it's fun to do it at this time of year when I mean. There's so much going on. I feel like you say it all the time, but it's truly, everything is on the table right now. Like, I mean, everything, everything. The the bass fishing is good in inshore, and then the, I mean, the offshore fishing, what do you you say? Like, it kind of felt when we were in the middle of, you know, last week, the week before, that I don't want to call things slow, but it wasn't exciting. You know what I mean? It was just the counts were a little bit lesser than they were the weeks before, and then we had the... 
you know, funky weather with those tropical storms that's and what... some rain and some wind, and it just it just felt off. Rick, it, it was so surprising to me that hurricane that came up. You think it's going to bring like bonanza and just sure. uh, greener pasture and just like a bump in the action? Isn't it crazy yeah. that it just like it it stemmed it really? It, it kind of did, and you but know, for a short period, yeah. And then you're you know, so you can't help but be like, all right, well, what's going to happen? I mean, is this is this it? Is it just going to fizzle away to not? And then, it, at least in terms of the good tuna fishing, you know, it just did exactly what it's supposed to do. There was a you know, there's a new moon over the weekend. I, I think it might even be today. I think today's the actual day of it. But just you know, m- moon phase is not that you can ever hang your hat on it and say this is going to happen or that's going to happen. But it often bring some sort of change and man it's just been fun to watch that big fish biting again and all over the backside of the island and then you know the local fishing really seemed to fire back off those dorado counts fantastic again we talked about a little bit yesterday the grade of the local tuna really increasing too yeah it's just been it's just it's you know what it is it's what it's what the middle of october is supposed to be nice weather really good fishing close to home rad it is it's so <laughs> i many, love it so many of the years that we have the, the the decent yellowfin or whatever close a lot of times they could be that 8 to 12 up to 20 right you know totally but, but most from, commonly they are right and and from what i've been watching and seeing and experienced myself i mean the uh, a 25 to 35 pound average but even up to 50 plus yeah man. i was like, saying I, I know just the other day we weighed a 47 pounder right. you know <laughs> like, crazy and i've seen them i've seen them bigger still and yeah. and then there's bluefin mixed with it and we've been here you know the other thing that's been fun is we've been hearing a lot more of because there's been i mean let's face it we all know we all seen the social media there has been some incredible dorado kelps this year best I mean, I'm sure best ever, best ever that I can, the, the best ever that I have been around for, which doesn't mean a lot. It hasn't been that long, but long enough that it's, you know, this is a, a, a pretty big deal. But we're starting to hear a lot more of, hey, we were on a Dorado kelp and well, we hooked a bluefin and we were on a Dorado kelp and it turned into yellowfin and, you know, a lot of variety in our zone right now, too. It's just yeah. it's just really cool. It's, it's super neat to see. I mean, it's it got me enough out of my seat and fired up and <laughs> i shouldn't say out of my seat because i'm always doing something right but it just got me out of my normal seat of inshore and 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 messing with the bass maybe halibut maybe a rockfish drop here or there yeah you know, just having fun and, and it got me offshore even you know <laughs> which is cool, cool. Oh, totally you know? it is i'm all about fun having fun and good times and action number one totally you know? Speaking of getting you offshore, I we talked about something yesterday, and I was so stoked that we were going to have the time today. I got so extra fired up about talking about slug fishing yesterday. Yeah. And I know that it has kind of, at least for me, it, it for sure fell to the back burner with weedless. Yeah. For the things we talked about, weedless so easy to fish, it's yeah. so easy to rig. Uh, everything bites it. You know, I mean, you'll catch a, you fish a seven inch weedless and you might hook a 12 inch calico or a 12 pounder. You know, I mean, like every, yeah. everything bites. But, anyways, we were talking about slug fishing and the rigging. And that was a question that I really wanted to ask both you and Kevin, but we got short up to a break and needed to. Right. Uh, and it was about rigging the slug. And you, you like kind of introduced us to that lure. I don't know. 10 years ago, 15 years ago. I mean, it's been a Pete, while now, right? I, I, like, I mean, I called you Pete. Jesus. Like, yesterday, talking to Wahoo, and it should have been uh, <laughs> Dorado. But here's the deal. That that actually, Rick, 24 years ago. Okay. That's or, what I, that, or, or 22 years ago. Yeah, it's been that long. That, that's, what I, that's how I felt. Um, a, a lo- long enough, this is what I was getting at. Long enough that rigging options of things have changed. Do you do anything different? Is it still the well, big it's... tube hook with your own spring? Do you utilize another spring? Do you use a weight? You know what I mean? Like, I know. There's so many questions. Here's, yeah. I'll try to lay it out clean. So those that remember 15, 18 years ago at the show, rigging them, the extravaganza of the Fred Hall, Long Beach, and just a line of people and triple deep and people trying to reach over others to fill their bag. And in that era, rigging those slugs, and, and we're talking eight inch. Mm-hmm. We're talking yeah, the, the, big ju- one. the jumbo slug. Oh, man, I take a deep breath because <laughs> it, it was it was crazy, dude. We, we literally were winding the spring. We were making it. I yeah. was making those springs. Oh, yeah. Rigging them and doing the whole thing. So this short little section of an inch and a half of spring, spring about the diameter of a, of a ballpoint pen, mm-hmm. right? You would twist into the head of the slug and then rig a uh, 8 big mouth tube hook. 
which had like a 90 degree bend in the front. It was just a giant offset worm hook. This huge worm hook. Rig giant. It, rig it through the spring so the spring actually anchored mm -hmm. into the spring right. holding the whole lure together. And I'll tell you what, at ICAST one year, uh, Scott Martin and, and Brent Chapman, two yeah, big, big league, hitters. Yeah. I was in a meeting with them. And listen to this. They both looked at each other. How did we never think of this? Yeah, that's cool. And that and that was for their rigging of freshwater baits. Yeah, right? they, they they couldn't believe it. Like, what the heck? Yeah. What has made it easier today is exactly those guys were involved with Trocar back then, and Trocar today has uh, a monster spring mm -hmm. from the development of what we were doing on their uh, big Nino. Uh, God, I forget the name of it. it, it it's well, it's it, they have a nino swim bait hook okay. that that has a beefy wire, and and it's from the kelp trick hook to, I think just their standard swim bait hook. They are so difficult to find. They make a batch of them, they send them out, and as you know, you, if you can get them in the shop, you know from buying. Yeah, and that, it's and, a pain, and that, and that's exactly what it is because it's it's so difficult clutch for us. But but nowhere else is using that thing, and so yeah. like it has its little production window in like the world of them making their hooks, and it's like once a year they spit out it's, X number, and that's it, and then they don't make any more, and it's sad. just so tough. It's, sad it's so hard yeah. to get. It is very difficult. So when they get them in, because they're difficult, the guys will buy twenty packs. Totally, of them. yeah. That's, have, that's what happened to us last time. You have ten guys come in and buy twenty packs, and, and they're gone again for another year. I know. <laughs> so what I did is. Is, uh, they actually sold a nine knot without the weight on it. Okay, and uh, it got so difficult to get. I'm like, well, I don't really like the half ounce too much. I'm like, man, I'm just going to cut these weights off, weights off the hook. Mm -hmm. So now with that huge spring and that beefy hook, you now have the perfect hook to marry up to that eight inch slug. Okay, and and it works great. It's a fun way to get bit, and it's just we we talked about it yesterday. It's uh, when the bite's tough and you could get 10 bites on the, uh, like let's say the weed list, 10 bites, to two to four or five pounders, you're gonna get at least 10 bites on that slug. Maybe 20 show themselves, right. come up and swipe at it or jump out of the water after it. Uh, they, they never had intentions of eating at that moment, but you drew their attention and yeah. they couldn't handle it and had to react. And, and the grade of fish is gonna be like half as much bigger. So if you're like two to three pounds on the weed list, it's probably going to be like a four pound average on this slug. That's cool. Which is rad. Right? I, it's so rad. And I, I think that just like, that's such a cool thing to go devote a little bit of time to doing. Like, yeah. you and your bud that like bass fishing, like, hey man, we're going to go do a couple of trips. Where we're just going to do this, knowing this probably isn't going to produce a 50 fish day, but the bites that we get are going to be the next level. I promise you. That's cool. Yeah. Like, there's, there's, it just raises another level. Now, what about two buds? What about me and my bud going fishing? Like, you and Matt's and you guys have spent, you know, a lifetime developing yeah. the technique of making that thing swim and twitch and move. Like, is it a difficult lure to master? Or once you get a handle of getting it rigged and it's straight, because it's a slug and it has its nat it finds its natural path, is it is it a is it an easy one to fish? You know, like how super how would you easy. rate it on scale of you know difficulty from all of the other stuff that you make? It's super easy. Like uh, Castman, he mentioned like watch yeah, right. It. Once you see it and understand, it's a no brainer. Mm -hmm. If you if I'm trying to explain it, it's a little more difficult. But slack line is the key, and and Castman will know exactly what I'm saying. Slack line being the fact that you let the lure. You give a couple twitches and you're tight to the lure, but then you're quick slack. So the twitch, twitch, and then it... it the lure reacts to those twitches. But you have to give it the slack uh -huh. to be able to To react. then fall. It, to, to then glide left or right okay. or up or down. You, you never know what it's going to do. Yeah. So you have to be able to read it and... And you don't want it penduling, pendul penduluming down from your rod tip. Like, it needs to fall on its own. It does. Like, yeah. you, can't be, you can't be tight to it but letting it fall controlled. Like, you've got to give it slack. So that slack and then it uh, veering left, right, up, or down any one direction then allows you to give it a quick rod snap, just a... 
and and then it yanks it back the other way. It shoots it shoots it the other direction. Oh, dude, that drives them nuts. Where can, mo- can you imagine? I'm, I'm so dude, into this, dude. Like I'm fish, so into this. Like like whether it's El Salto, the six and a half seven inch slug is perfect for El Salto. Okay, like it's the perfect deal there. Uh, I fished that one locally too, but you're gonna. It's like a 14 inch average type of deal, mm-hmm. right? If you just want to go catch fish and have fun. Uh, but the 8-inch slug is the one for the bigger ones. It's the same action, and it's the same darn reaction from the fish. It's beautiful. I mean, it's whether you're fishing Calicos locally, whether you're at Cedros, or whether you're at El Salto, or at a local lake, too. You know, I mean, it's local lakes, they're, they're just, you just got to scale it down a hair. Okay. You know, and, and you, could, you could do it the same. For sure, but it it draws a reaction unlike any other. That's it's rad. No, it I gets me it. fired up. Yeah, I can't wait totally. for the El Salto trip for sure. I mean, that's going to be a fun one. And you guys go in February, is that right? That's it. So it'll be uh, late, very late January. Okay, I got think, it. Like to the first of February. Okay, yeah. okay, cool. Oh, that'll be a fun yeah, time. Yeah, totally. I, El Salto is just one of those. You got to sign up with Castman. Yeah. Or you guys have trips going too, right? We Are do. They're they're all full. Um, but uh, yeah, we, we do. We're going we're going with Frank. Um, but I'm with you that like going with Castman is the ease of the ease of having somebody who's traveled Baja and mainland in yeah. Mexico as a profession, you know, for however many dozens of years, and like. Cass has just got like the little things so handled. You know, yeah. when you're walking through the airport, it's just nice to be there with a guy that's done it a hundred times. Like, oh, dude, throw your bag in this line. Yeah, uh, it's nice to know that when you, you know, when you step off the plane, that van is already there and already ready with the dude that Cass has done with a hundred times. Like, yeah. those are the added benefits of going with Cass. You've done it enough times, Brandon from our tackle store. I'm going with. Like, we've done it enough times that we're comfortable enough now. But like. The cast trip is just, it's seamless. You know what I mean? Super you just, seamless. You just know there's not going to be the issues. And, I mean, it's travel. When the small issues do arise, and there's always something, you have a cast man to handle it and take care, you know, that, that kind of stuff. So, and, and we talked about that yesterday. There's a safety net involved, right? No doubt, it's man. just you've got the safety of having somebody that's done it. You've got the safety of... Of the crew that you're working with, or the cast man's working with, sure. And it's just yeah, you know that the operation that you're going with has done legit. it for all of the years in the previous and all of the years yeah. going forward. Like yeah, it, it that that adds to it. It's a, a good way to do it for sure. That's a I, I, I the the thing that I like so much about Salto, and I, I hope that it comes across like. If you're a freshwater bass guy, obviously it's happening. It, it really is. Who, who I hope really signs up for that trip is is not only that guy, but it is such a fun trip. If you're a guy like I am, that's a saltwater saltwater fisherman more than anything, or just you just like fishing, you know what I mean? You. you it's such a difference from what we're used to doing with like the little the little kickbacks of the same. You know, it's still a Baja fun, cool feel, even though you're in mainland Mexico. So depending on where you are, sometimes you're fishing out of a ponga, sometimes you're fishing out of a little bass boat. Um, but it, it, it's just a it's chuck and wind, lots of bites to be had. You can be super technique savvy and crush them there. The Brandon, the Brandon, exactly, of the world. Yeah. exactly who I'm yeah. thinking of. You know, right. Brandon's going to go there with 20 rods and have a different rod for every technique and every lure he fishes, and each size crankbait's going to have its own rod. Or you can go there with a four inch swimmer and spectra and a piece of 25 pound fluorocarbon and throw that lure on the bank and wind it back to the boat and get bites all day long you, it's so cool you, you're so right rick you, you could go uh you you could have fun fishing crankbaits like if you're a crankbait kind of guy and you just want to go fit, do that you you'd have the time of your life yeah. like literally you would probably catch more fish than a guy that's throwing something that might be biting, right? right? Like maybe they're on the poppers or that yeah, kind of thing, right. right? And and that guy has 30, 40 fish for the morning and, and you with a crankbait may oh, have dude. double the amount of fish, right? But it's just you get bit really any way it's there so cool. at times. Yeah. And there's times where they're not like on a particular thing and maybe sitting in 15 feet of water and you've got to throw just a little bit deeper diving crank and that might be the only thing that's working for the morning. But it completely changes yeah. for the afternoon. We had a session with your four inch weedless bait. Yeah. <clears throat> we were fishing it on a flashy swimmer. And like, dude, you couldn't you could not make a cast and wind it back to the boat fast enough and not have one eat it. I yeah. mean, it was just every single cast. They weren't big ones. They were like 
a, a pound to maybe three pounds. And we had one like big, you know, Steve Pennard had one big stand. I had a seven pounder like in that mix. But for yeah. the most part, it was all average size ones, but just like laughing and hollering and having, having a cold. It was time. so much fun. That's just a really cool experience. I, I, I like that place a lot. I, I have a funny story about that. So Brandon and I were there and we were smashing them. We were having a great time on the five inch swimmer and I, I mean, just wrap your mind around the stick ups, all the stuff in the water, yeah. and we're fishing in like less than ten feet of water, and the stuff is just crushing it as you come up to the stick ups, and they're just like calicos and the kelp. Yeah. It's the same darn thing, and we're catching good ones and having fun. And uh, this father and son, like with an eight year old, and they were from Louisiana okay. or from Kentucky or somewhere. And they're having a good time, and, and they're asking how, how we're getting them, you know? And it's like, wow, you're kidding me. So we gave them, like, a handful of the five-inch swimmers, and they came back and, like, dude, high five. And, like, <laughs> we had the best session of our lives. We had three nine-pounders oh, and no one way. that might have been 11 and just all these seven-pounders. And Brandon and I look at each other like, man, like, <coughs> what part of the lake were yeah, you right? on? Or what were you doing? Like, because we had a bunch of five and sixes. Yeah, and, you had great fishing, but nothing like that. And and what they were doing is just fishing it slower, down deeper. Really? Yeah, okay. so it's just... Uh, yeah, what I'm, go. What I'm there laying out is you can have fun any way you want and catch fish, yeah. you know, for sure. Oh, it's a special spot, man. Yeah. I dig it. Well, speaking of special, it's just a special show today. Again, it's just, uh, it's just Corey and myself having fun. Whatever you want to talk about, that's what we're doing today. You got questions on tackle, you got questions about rigging, where to go, what to do, all that kind of stuff. The show's for you and Corey. We're gonna have a lot of fun doing it. Yeah, really, Rick. I mean, these are some of the funnest shows you know ever, and really enjoy them. And I know we've talked a little bit about slug fishing and El Salto and calicos and that kind of thing. But man, the tuna fishing and. Rick, there was a swordfish caught, a, a, one of the first ones, right, like a week ago or so? Yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and now now have been a couple. I mean, it's it's starting to, you know, I, I, I don't, I wouldn't say that we're in the heat of it yet, but for sure we saw that fish that Dylan from Bite Sport Fishing had. Dude, and seen, a 14-foot skiff? <laughs> yeah, Come that's on. A, that's so cool. Oh, um, and then several others, you know, it's a... Uh, yeah, that is officially on the table. And I, I know that when I leave here, I've got two swordfish reels waiting for me to get all, you know, dialed. That, that's like, that's something at the shop that keeps us pretty busy. Like, you can, it's another one of those things that you can do it all, all ways. But if you, you know, if you want to have a multiple buoy set up, like the, the rigging part of the line can get a little bit, you know, uh, tech or whatever, you know, a lot, lot of, lot, a lot that can go into it. And so I got a couple of reels waiting for wow, me when I get, when I get back to the shop. But yeah. So but you're right. We could talk about that too. Just give us a call at 213-432-1090. Today's uh, your show. We're happy to talk about whatever you want. And we're giving away a full day trip on the San Diego out of Seaforth, man. We've talked about it yesterday. Just some incredible fishing going on there in the full day range all year, really. And uh, you could text us via the app, too. Only through the app. Make sure you do leave your name and telephone number because... Uh, you're going to want to win that prize. We're going to flip the coin at the end of the show, and uh, it'll go between a texter and a caller and uh, giving away that full-day trip on the San Diego. Listen, we're going to be right back on Let's Talk Hookup. Again, give us a call, 213-432-1090. We're going to be right back. It's Southern California Sport Fishing Voice. Let's Talk Hookup on the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. When you want to catch big bluefin tuna, you need Shimano. Hi, this is Doug Kern from Fisherman's Landing Tackle, the saltwater tackle professionals. The Shimano Beastmaster is the pinnacle of electric reels. Shimano's Gigamax motor packs a winding strength up to 250 pounds, ideal for kite fishing and more. Shimano's butterfly flat fall jigs are irresistible to bluefin tuna because they stay in the strike zone longer. Shimano makes a complete line of butterfly flat fall jigs to target your favorite gang fish. For all your Shimano needs, visit us at Fisherman's Landing Tackle at Fisherman's Landing in San Diego. The name that stands out among anglers is Fisherman's Landing, your top choice in local and long-range fishing. We offer the finest open party trips from one to three days, the best charter boats available, and of course, our world-renowned long-range fleet. Fisherman's Landing offers half-day trips on the Dolphin and full-day trips on the Liberty. Many trips can be easily booked online at Fisherman'sLanding.com. I'll see you at Fisherman's Landing in San Diego. Dana Landing in Mission Bay is the one-stop shop for a great day on the water. This is Mia. Come see me and our expert staff for everything you need for your next fishing trip, food, bait, tackle, beverages, and more. Our tackle shop is certainly one of San Diego's finest. 
We have you covered from bay bass to big tuna and people that can help you get set up right. We also have Dougie, one of the best reel repair guys around. Need freshwater tackle? Head to East County Bait and Tackle, the best rods and reels, the hottest freshwater lures, and live bait. ECBT has an amazing staff who love to share their passion for fishing. We now also have Lemon Grove Bait and Tackle, both fresh and saltwater tackle, right in the heart of Lemon Grove. ECBT is at the end of the 67 freeway on Maple View and Lakeside. Lemon Grove Bait and Tackle take 94 to Broadway and Lemon Grove. And Dana Landing is right next to the Dana Lawn Tramp in Mission Bay. Check danalanding.com for more details. Hey anglers, AFCO Pro Captain Ben Florentino of Coastal Charters here. As a full-time guide, I'm on the water all year long. It's my livelihood. Having the right clothing is of the utmost importance staying warm, dry, cool, and comfortable to endure whatever the Pacific wants to throw at me. Thankfully, I'm equipped with AFCO clothing to keep me dialed season after season. Do yourself a favor and check out AFCO's award-winning gear at a dealer near you or learn more at AFCO.com. This is Art Taylor of The Searcher. Celia, Team Searcher, and I would like to thank all of our loyal customers for their support for the past 40 years. The Searcher has air-conditioned cabins, an RSW system to preserve your catch, a fantastic crew, and awesome food. If you are looking for a great fishing adventure, our 2023 schedule is available online now at SearcherSportFishing.com. Call Celia or Aaron in the office at 619-226-2403. That's 619-226-2403. Saturday, November 5th is Tackle Day at Fisherman's Landing in San Diego. Seminars by saltwater experts, great deals on tackle, top tackle reps like AFTCO with Psycho Pro fluorocarbon, and incredible deals on AFTCO clothing. Tackle Day at Fisherman's Landing, Saturday, November 5th. Hook up! All right, welcome back to Let's Talk Hook Up. And again, just Rick and I having a great time with you, the callers, the texters adding to the show. You want to text us via the uh, Let's Talk Hook Up app, you could do so, or... Uh, give us a call at 213. There is one open line right now. Yeah, one still. Right? 213-432-1090. That's your chance right now. One open line. And uh, we're giving away a full-day trip on the San Diego out of C4 Sport Fishing. Yeah, well, today is, uh, today's a big day for the Padres. We're certainly excited. Isn't that cool? Yeah, very, very cool. Today, uh, today 4 o'clock, right here on My Dear 1090 ESPN Radio, uh, live Padres and Mets at 4 o'clock. So, we're uh, crossing fingers and crossing toes. Big, uh, big deal. So, but yeah, uh, great to have that on the booming signal. My year ten ninety out everywhere. So yeah, big, big day for the station today. I know I'll be tuned in with uh, Musgrove on the mound, oh, man. man. Local San yeah, Diego, so rad, doing it. Yeah, uh, so rad. I think they're gonna take it. I think so too. I yeah, I, yeah, I just think so too. I just think uh, I, I like I like this postseason baseball. It's fun. So yeah. Anyway, it's a great day today and a big day for my year ten ninety and very proud uh, to have Let's Talk hook up back at home where it's supposed to be on my year ten. And yeah, big day, four o'clock, pods and Mets on, on the station. Hey, let's head on south down to Rancho Leonero. Our buddy John Ireland is on the line. Good morning, John. Good morning, John. Good morning, Rick. Hello, Corey. Well, we've got good fishing down here down south. Uh, I'm not I surprised know, uh, at that. <laughs> yeah, I know Pete and the gang are doing well up at Palmas. Uh, loads and loads of Dorado right now. <laughs> the Dorado are thick right in front. Not a, not a long boat ride at all. We're enjoying 86 to 87 degree water. Uh, air is very pleasant. You know, we're getting into fall weather now, so things are cooling down. It's uh, it's nice. Highs are in the high 80s uh, in the late afternoon. More cool mornings. It's just an excellent time here to be down here. Um, and the bite is is very very good. It's it's like I say, directly off La Rivera on those good old banks of those producers, um, one to four miles off. And running from La Rivera down to the lighthouse, and and there's just loads and loads of Dorado in there, uh, trolling light uh, hoochies, uh, small feathers, uh, and then there's loads and loads of sardine available too. We got a real good uh, sardine have sh- finally shown up a little light er- earlier in the season, but my gosh, there's plenty of them around. So at, literally, almost everyone is limiting on the on the Dorado. And they're mixed with striped marlin. Uh, not, doesn't seem to be many sails or blues around, but gosh, there's bunches of stripers. And uh, so consequently, uh, most boats are releasing at least one, mo- and lots and lots of boats are releasing multiples. Real real good fishing inside. It's kind of affecting the tuna fishing a little bit because it's so good inside. Nobody's ranging around outside uh, looking for the pods of porpoise holding the tuna. 
and I'm sure they're probably out there, but for the last couple of weeks, nobody's even been out there looking for them. That said, there's some big yellowfin, solitary yellowfin that are being taken off of La Rivera uh, in the same areas as the Dorado and the Marlin. And, and then uh, down by Vina Ramos, they're picking up some uh, some hogs down there, some 100-pounders on sardine, drift fishing right off the White Cliffs there and, and around the area. So it's it's good tuna fishing as well, but you know nobody's really targeting the tuna like they are the dorado and the stripers. Some wahoo as well. We're having, getting wahoo. Uh, uh, when you run into them, there's not many around, but when you you do run into them, they're, the boats are enjoying multiple uh, boating, multiple fish, and and uh, we had one boat at El Capitan last week ran into a, a bunch and uh, boated five uh, wahoo, believe it or not, between 25 and 60 pounds. But, uh, you know, it's, they're there when you catch them. You know, they're in and out, but uh, they are around. So, uh, overall, very, very good fishing. And, uh, like I said, I'm sure the tournament up at Palmas, I'm sure they've killed them up there. I talked to Pete last night, and he said that they're, you guys were having a real good one up there as well. So, good fishing, you guys. Very Man, good fishing. Love hearing that, John. Glad to hear that things are going so steady and uh, I know that it seemed like for a little bit there we had storm after storm stacked up on each other, and now things have mellowed and fell, fallen into that great fall pace that it's supposed to. Kind of great fishing yeah. everywhere. Yeah, you know, and, and you know, the storms really missed us this year. We really didn't have any major events, no wind events at all. We had uh, one real good storm that brought us a lot of rain, and otherwise we've been real, real lucky this year, which is a good news. And and you know and also 2022 has been just an excellent fishing season. It started about the second week in June and just been very very consistent good fishing right through the season. So we're happy. It's been a good year. We love the East Cape John and Rancho Llaneros, my favorite spot out there. If uh, somebody wants to come join you, how do we call Pam? How do we get in on the great fishing that you've described? And boy, just enjoy the ranch. Thanks. It's eight hundred six four six. Two two five two or ranchlandarrow dot com. Awesome, buddy. Great job, John. Appreciate it so much, and we'll look forward to talking to you next week. You too. Nice talking to you, gentlemen. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Yeah, man, that sounds beautiful down there, doesn't it? The fish in and and just in the way Pete was describing it with the uh, jungle esque. Yeah, you know, with all the rain they've had. <clears throat> that place is so wild in in just what it looks like leading up to and then after yeah. the rain. You know, it gets so dry and so gray and brown, and then. You put a couple of those big storms that dump, you know, multiple inches of rain, and in one week, it's a jungle. You yeah, know, it's yeah. so cool. It's it's amazing. It did, those plants just hold back their growth, waiting for that yeah. rainfall. They yeah. know, and then and when, they it, bloom then when it's on, it's on, <laughs> and, they, and they bloom instantly. Yeah, like, it's a total cool thing. It really is. Yeah. Well, the phones are packed, Corey. Let's jump into them. Let's do it. How about Vinny? Vinny calling uh, from Carlsbad. Good morning, Vinny. Thanks for joining us. What's up, Vinny? Hey, good morning, guys. A hey, couple. Uh, I got a question, then a uh, comment. Uh, I'll start with my comment. I uh, went on the Liberty a couple weeks ago uh, with my cousin, and uh, wow, we had a blast. We left the dock at five, and we didn't get back till eight p.m. <laughs> I mean, those guys just fished. It was so amazing. Enable and, and Corey and Mitchell, and I'm sure I'm missing a few other guys there. But wow, those guys are so fishy. That is such an awesome, awesome boat. Those guys just. We had limited Dorado. We caught bluefin. We caught yellowfin. We just had a blast, and it was just a fun, fishy boat. So, anybody anybody out there listening, definitely recommend uh, hopping aboard on the Liberty. That is just first class operation. The uh, customer service, everything about those guys were just first class. Well so that said, my, man. Uh, that's- I was just going to say, I was just going to comment that it's so rad that you had a trip like that with that good of fishing. It, and it was just—it was a full day, you know. What I mean, you—you you were at home in the morning, and you're home at night. Like uh, to to see that caliber so close to home is so rad. And like you say, they, I'm, I'm with you. The guys did a great job. That boat's so comfy. Sarah in the galley just kills it. Uh, bathrooms are nicer than the ones at my house. You know what I mean? Like it's just and, the and, boat's cool. And to be able to take a shower and have the option of a bunk and the whole thing. Yeah, pretty pretty slick. Vinny, I'm glad you had such a great trip, man. A solid report. Uh, when, when was that? You said just a couple weeks back. Just a couple of weeks ago, yeah. And then, um, quick question here. If, um, I, I, but talking to a buddy of mine last night, uh, Donnie, and uh, we were having dinner last night, and we were talking about, like, we want to hop on, like, a six-pack. Any, any recommendations out of uh, either Seaforth or Fisherman's, or what do you recommend we try to put together something for a couple guys? 
Yeah, I mean, lots of great operations, you know, so much so that I, I hesitate to say because I don't want to leave things out, but uh, I really like uh, that Limitless out of Dana Landing um, in Mission Bay. Um, in Seaforth, uh, you got El Gato Dos that has Brian. been around forever. Um, recently, I, I, I believe, you know, up- upgraded boats again, but Brian's ran a really class operation for a lot of years. I think he's been involved with Seaforth for over 20 years. I, I'm sure. Yeah. I mean, I. I, you know, I, I grew up fishing yeah, over there and remember him re- running that boat. So uh, that's a great one. Sam Patella has uh, his operation Invader that runs out of C4 Sport Fishing. He's been on the show multiple times. And, you know, and, and then in addition to those, uh, I would call them, you know, traditional six pack trips where you're on, you know, usually a 40 to 60 foot sport fisher type boat bunks and thing, you know, also is the, you know, the, I hate to call it new style, but, you know, trips like a Brandon Hayward where, you uh, know, four pack. where it's four and six, you know, six yeah. people on, on the go fast um type trip you know like almost like a hybrid between a traditional six pack and what you did on the liberty you know same same hours like a full day trip but fishing in the same zone that your day and day and a half would because you can zip out real quick and zip back real quick and it's crazy because you're going like that one i see rick at the invincible Mm -hmm. 40 miles an hour i mean what what is that yeah yeah, commonly you know yeah right i mean so you could leave the dock and literally be on the fishing grounds within an hour. Yeah. I mean. But with that, too, comes, you know, like everything's got its trade-off. Like yeah. the, the nice thing about going on the traditional boat, bunk, sleeping, hanging, food, you know what I mean? Like so y- y- you can you can kind of tailor it to you can tailor it to what you want it to be. But, yeah, some, some great operations out there. Th- those would definitely be some of my favorites. Yeah, that's a good one for sure. I appreciate the phone call, Vinny, very much. Uh, I had a fun text come through. Um, this one was let me fire back up um okay sorry about the delay it's all good Rick, okay man. i just goes. uh it was a really cool one um it was from uh from rich and i want to make sure that his okay uh kind of a long one good morning rick and Corey. i've been patiently waiting for this show uh, my wife and i love to fish together um both with and without our kids we joined freedom boat club so now it's up to us to find the fish we subscribe to Fish Dope, also to Dave Hansen's site, and we listen faithfully to Let's Talk Hookup. We've had a lot of fun, but can't figure out how to catch calicos in the kelp beds. Uh, we usually head out to Green Tank. We braille our bait. We see lots of fish. We hook them up. We hook several up immediately. Then we lose them into the kelp. Um, would you guys please discuss how to best set up anchoring to maximize our fun and minimize our losing our fish and our tackle and how to keep them going for extended periods of time? That's all from Rich and Oceanside. Well, Rich, that's right up my alley. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah great oh, text, that's Rich. good times. I think uh, there's a couple styles. Like you mentioned, Rich, you're anchoring up and doing that kind of thing. And, and Dave Hansen, man, I wish he was in here. I know we'll have him later, but that's totally like sport boat. Dave Hansen style, like uh, a few scoops of bait. Chovies are the best because, uh, you know, a one to two pound calico can't possibly stuff itself with little four inch anchovies. I mean, it would take forever. So you keep them chummed and you keep the activity going. The keeping them out of the kelp, that's what kind of makes it exciting. I mean, that's the excitement part. The anchoring up. you always want to make sure you're up current. Mm-hmm. You know, if you got the green tank, which is a proper area of kelp, uh, you could have a downhill straight in or, you know, an uphill type of current and try to put it together. I mean, you just go. So- and how do you how do you know when when uh, you, you said you could have all those types of current? How do you know what that current, what direction it's going? Like, how would you, you know, if you're if you're rich and you're putting out and you get to the green tank area, how do you know which way the current's going and that kind of stuff? Yeah, I know. It's kind of. So if the current, if the kelp's all combed over toward the coast, you want to position yourself like up current of all that, mm-hmm. and you just read the kelp. You maybe so you you just look in the water at the kelp stringers. It, and, They're pointed up. It's going uphill. If it's and know the direction. Okay. Yeah. So you might have uh, maybe a west wind that might be combing over the top part, but you can see down ten feet the mm-hmm. real direction of the current and what's going on and you don't like what you see it'll probably change within yeah it always changes i mm-hmm. mean 30 minutes an hour it could completely change the other direction so you have to really take advantage of what's given you at the moment but if you anchor up and you position yourself so you're a cast length from the kelp and you get that stuff going uh small chovies are the best because you get the activity going you get them all fired up like i said they don't fill themselves up 
you can you can have a really fun day to keep them out of the kelp. I mean, that's difficult, but that's the fun. You, you try to like pull them out of the kelp. And my favorite days, seriously, fishing with Danny Wade, fishing with the boys on like the Fisherman 3 and uh, with Tim when he first got the boat. And we're talking 35 years ago was so much fun like that's what made and those of you that remember pug jones do you remember pug jones right i know who the name i know who that is yeah. um but that is a little before me so there there was a day i can remember on the fisherman three it might have been on the daily double with fred too because i fished a lot on there uh we were down at the ib kelp there was a beautiful area of kelp down there at that time and uh pug had a calico 11 to 12 pounds oh my gosh a huge one i i can remember the visions of that still just a big huge beautiful <laughs> fish man and uh yeah pug jones was a serious uh female angler that just she would take it to the next level i got to witness that that's and, cool and uh, danny wade growing up with that and fishing in the kelp's fun man it's just it's it's neat and uh the challenges of pulling them out of the kelp i i know i'm not getting to the right answer because there isn't a yeah. really a right way to do it it's just learning and uh finessing them and not trying to yank them yanking when it's time to yank yeah but allowing them to have their moment when they're tangled up sure because when they're tangled up they they i don't know how to say it but if they have the hook in the corner of their mouth and and you've got two inches to the tip of their mouth and then you have your line coming out from the hook you're creating a v i know it's difficult to describe on the radio i'm describing it with my hands here and rick's understanding but all that kelp will wad up in that v between the tip of the mouth and where the hook is sure the harder you pull the more kelp you're going to put in that v and you're just creating a roadblock so you kind of you give them a couple inches of slack and they kick around and they pull out of the v and you start yanking again that's one of the tricks. I mean, that's the trick. Um, yeah. I would say, too, you, your boat positioning will have a lot to do with that. And just know that you can always, if you've got current going into the kelp, you can always scope yourself farther back. So that's true. If, if you're, you know, in terms of driving your boat around and you see this nice little horseshoe pocket of kelp and that's where you'd like your boat to sit at, uh you know potentially try anchoring in a little deeper of water you know r judge which way the wind and the current is is likely going to slide you back into there and you know and count counter that get up in front of it but put your anchor down in front of that a ways and knowing that you can always you can always rip off another little bit of line and scope yourself farther back but if you get you know if you get yourself so on top of it you can, you can never get back or you can never pull yourself out of yeah. it either and you know use use that chum like Corey's talking about to pull that fish from the kelp line towards you at least giving yourself a little better head start to start with so you that's, know, that's nicely put rick really yeah because there's an art to it man sure and that's why guys hire dave hansen and that's for all the years i've spent on a sport boat is what has led to me today right oh, no doubt same for sure like there's no better there's no better way to learn it than to go on the new c4 to go on the dolphin to go on the daily double to go on the fish you know and those are the best in the world at it there's no question and i mean we as passengers myself very much included like you you just take it for granted they're so fluid and so smooth at what they do that like you forget that there's difficulty and technique involved because they're so good at it you, but hey i i forgot the technique because i'm enjoying a nice cheeseburger and, <laughs> and while they're and, and while totally. they're while they're anchoring up anchoring up i'm finishing up my cheeseburger and ready to make a cast they're the best know? in the world yeah. and we're so lucky that like you know it, it costs you 50 bucks to to basically go you know if if you treat it as such you can get you can get the best lesson in the world if you keep your eyes open and you know what if you don't feel like it and you want to have cold on a cheeseburger you get to do that too so yeah, yeah it's pretty it's pretty cool well, rich a, a great text a really good one yeah i appreciate it very much all right hey rick we're going to be right back on let's talk hookup we're having such a fun time we want you to join us 213-432-1090 one open line right now and uh text us via the app we're going to be right back and let's talk hookup on the mightier 1090 espn radio this is pete and i hear it all the time that jim and mary 
Seminary at Poway Valley Collision are amazing. I took my car to Poway Valley Collision, mentioned Let's Talk Hookup, and they gave us VIP treatment, fixed our car, and even gave us a special price. Believe me when I say Poway Valley Collision is worth the drive from anywhere in the Southland. At some point, your car will need a body repair, and I'm confident in saying it pays to go to Poway Valley Collision. Our listeners can save hundreds of dollars on your next car or truck repair. They work with most insurance companies, including Auto Club, MetLife, Wawanisa, and more. All you do is call Jim, Mary, or any of their team members, and they do all the rest. No hassles, just top-notch work and VIP treatment. When you take your car or truck to Poway Valley Collision, the job and experience will be top-notch. Get it fixed right at Poway Valley Collision. 14211 Garden Road in Poway. Check powayvalleycollision.com. Great fishing is what Seaforth Sports Fishing in Mission Bay is all about. With free parking and fully stocked tackle shop, Seaforth Sport Fishing is a favorite among anglers. Come aboard top boats like the Aztec, Cortez, Endeavor, Apollo, Outer Limits, Elgato Doe, Pride, Polaris Supreme, Tribute, Pacific, Pacific Voyager, and the Voyager. Plus, the new Seaforth Sea Watch in San Diego offer the finest half and full day trips available. Seaforth Sport Fishing. For charters or schedule, check SeaforthLanding.com. Run by fishermen or fishermen in Mission Bay. Saturday. Saturday, November 5th, it's Tackle Day at Fisherman's Landing in San Diego, and it's our largest sale ever. Plenty of seminars by saltwater experts, over 20 reps from tackle manufacturers like Shimano. Come check out the Shimano Talica, the pinnacle of lever drag two-speed reel. When throwing jigs, the Shimano Trinidad is your top choice. With extreme cranking power and Shimano's super free spool for the best ever tackle bargains, check out Tackle Day at Fisherman's Landing, Saturday, November 5th. This is Captain Tim Ekstrom from the long-range vessel Royal Star. With my partners Randy Toussaint and Brian Sims, we have set the bar for the long-range fishing experience. Spring 8-day, summer 5-day, or a fly-down, fly-back, 11-day winter trip, we deliver the highest quality long-range voyage you will find. From our premium RSW fish storage to our top-of-the-line chefs and crew, Royal Star distinguishes itself from all others. Want to grab a spot on the Royal Star? Check us out at royalstarsportfishing.com or call Tracy at 619-224-4764. Season long range fishermen know that the Red Rooster 3 is the finest fishing vessels in terms of technology, design, speed, comfort, and safety. This 105 foot sport fishing yacht meets every demand for comfort while delivering an unforgettable fishing vacation. Captain Andy Kate and crew are experienced, friendly, and sincere in their desire to help you have the trip of a lifetime. Book a trip on the Red Rooster 3 and you'll be back. Trips go fast. So check redrooster3.com or call Lee Palm Sport Fisheries at 619 224 3857. All right, welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup. Having such a fun show, Rick, and I know we got fish fish reports on hold there. And uh, let me tell you, man, gas prices are just out of control, dude. Dude. Like, (laughs) seriously, like, come on, man, you got you got to get over to Summit Gasoline. Get the lowest gas price possible for your car, truck, or trailer boat only at Summit Gasoline at the San Diego Sports Arena. Get California fishing licenses, twenty four hours a day. Discount bait certificates, beer, soda, snacks, and 100 pounds of free ice. I can't believe that, man. The lowest so price rad. in town, and they're still giving you 100 pounds of free ice with a minimum of 35 gallons purchased. Uh, Summit Gasoline. Say hello to the uh, manager there, Martha. She's like the sweetest thing ever, has a smile worth a million bucks, <laughs> and a super friendly staff. So much more than the lowest price prices in town it's an easy out with your your boat trailer at summit gasoline at the san diego sports arena check them out yeah such a rad spot and boy today that means right. <laughs> so wild ouch so wild <laughs> hey let's jump right into it and find out what's biting we got captain brian Willie at dana war sport fishing on the line what's up Willie? good morning brian hey what's up guys how are you this morning doing good doing awesome very oh, very good just, just a fun chat this morning huh just yeah awesome. it's always always cool no agenda just hanging out right nice Good stuff, man. Well, hey, we had a we had a banger week up here, man. We had some good conditions, and you know, just a fun week. You started kind of like with our half day scene. I'd call it just like classic, uh, just coastal fall fishing. You know, with some bass in the mix for the guys on the fly line bait. The artificial stuff getting bit this, this week for those guys throwing the rubber lures, like that five inch flukes and the the swim baits. Just fun surface action on that stuff. And there's a little bit of that smaller pocket bonita type stuff zipping around on the surface for the guys wanting to throw like a. 40-gram cold sniper jig, 
Also, some better sheephead fishing, too, this week with, you know, the addition of all that commercial lobster gear in the water. That has those fish up and active as well. So, guys fishing the dropper really with, with some shrimp and stuff like that have been catching some nice sheephead in a couple areas. That's really helped. We had a cool little deal, too. We have this after-school fishing thing that comes out with us on Wednesday afternoons for, like, six weeks. And one day this week, or on Wednesday this week, they were in tight, man. They were in five fathoms catching bass, and a giant spot of yellow came up. That big bruiser coastal stuff. They were able to get one nice one, 40-pounder on the boat. Uh, yeah. So just some good water in a couple areas has some stuff fired up. So it was cool to see some of that. And then with our three-quarter day scene, you know, we're, we're back offshore. We had very good Dorado fishing again this week in easy three-quarter day range. You know, we're catching fish in a few different areas, so it's not just like an isolated pocket of, like, holdover fish. It's, you know, there, there's still quite a bit of fish out there. And these fish have grown, man, in, the, you know, like the last six, eight weeks that we've been fishing this stuff. You know, average size now, I'd say, is 12 pounds with some pushing 18 pounds. Uh, fly line baits accounted for, obviously, all the fish this week. And, uh, you know, on some of these kelps, we're seeing tuna as well, both bluefin and yellowfin. Seeing some of that in our counts. Also, the last couple of days, we've had good sign of the yellowfin on the dolphin that's been in our zone as well. Colmeny yesterday had some shots at this fish. They were a little undergunned on some of the rental gear, but uh, they got some of that fish to the boat. Some of that stuff is pushing 35 pounds. So with Gee, the water temps, right? yeah, some some bruisers for sure. Um, water temps, 71 to 73. So, you know, that's, that's helped as well. And just a, a tip from us, you know, everyone seems to want to fish braided line this, you know, for this offshore stuff. One, you don't need it when you're fishing this, this kelp patty fish, this Dorado fish, or I even say for this yellowfin on the dolphin. But if you are going to fish it, we lost a lot of fish like the last, two or three minutes of the battle because they're just fishing too short of a leader. A um, hundred yards, I'd say would be a good call on this stuff. You know, if you get in a tangle and you have to cut yourself out of a little bit, you still have a shot, but guys with these short little top shots are just getting busted off in the last, last little deal, you know, fish on the surface, that color waiting for a gap. Um, you know, fish makes one little turn or one little dip and you know, it's, it's see you later on that thing. So come prepared with, uh, you know, if you have reels with straight mono on it, you know, I, I would definitely recommend just fishing that over the braided line for sure. And then off the beach, even, you know, the Fury, he's had some great action, some good bluefin opportunity at night. You know, some fish for sure pushing 150. He had Jeez. limits uh, of fish for uh, a two-day trip that he had out there this week. And along with that at SCI, you know, more shots at that solid yellow tail, 18 to 25 pounds, and more great bass, bonito, and, you know, fish on the sinker, so the guy's fishing the bottom. So killer week. Just awesome October fishing. So reservations for sure. You got to make them if you want to get on a boat. Still, our number here nine four nine four nine six five seven nine four, or you can hit us on the web at danawarf dot com. Willie, a great report as always. What what is the right size rig for that? Uh, you know, you're talking about your Dorado Kelpin straight mono rigs. Right. Twenty five pound is a forty pound. What's the what's the ideal rig for a guy to? You jump can on get the boat away with getting on that. Yeah, twenty five pound is perfect. You know, it wouldn't be a bad call to have you know a forty pound rod as well for that uh, that tuna that we're seeing. You, you'd get bites on that tuna for sure on the dolphin on that forty pound. I think no problem. But uh, you know, Trinidad fourteen. Trinidad 20 with the 40 pound on a suitable rod, you know, you're good to go. Cool. So just just come prepared. Yep. Dig, dig it. All right. Well, great report, man. Certainly sounds like good fishing. Like you say, that's we love October. Right. <laughs> good know, weather, man. biting fishing. It is a fun one. No, no doubt about it. One more time, shoot us a number, Willie, if somebody wants to come join you. Cool. 949 496 5794. We'll get the landing, or again, you can book online at daynorm.com. You guys are the best. Appreciate it, Willie. We look forward to talking next week. Roger. Thanks, guys. See ya. All right. Yeah. Now let's head on down to C4, to uh, not C4, but right? C Dros. <laughs> We're going to head all the way down to C Dros Sport Fishing and talk to our buddy Jeff Flowers on the line. What's up, Jeff? Morning, Jeff. Good morning, gentlemen. Hey, that was, uh, man, what a, what a fantastic morning to listen to just the chit chat going on. Good stuff. <laughs> right. Lots of fun. Lots of fun. Well, I'll tell you, you know, especially with those big swim baits that Corey makes, so you get out there in the top of that flat kelp and just drop them off with one of those big trocar hooks and uh, just let it swim, you know, just just have fun. And, and uh, you learn how to fish big calico bass that way. And what a, what a great way to do it. Right. So down at the island, things have been fantastic. Uh, even though that storm pushed through, it, it kind of messed things up for a couple of days. But, you know, fish get hungry just like we do. And uh, fishing's been fantastic. That pelagic stuff starting to move in. Um, hopefully, we're going to see some yellowfin here shortly, and the Dorado or uh, they're 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 biting. 
the yellows are biting, tough stuff up to 30, 35 pounds. And for whatever reason, we've had a, an influx of uh, big white sea bass being caught. Uh, I think they had the, uh, their largest down there so far since we've been uh, involved in, in the island and fishing down there. It was just under 70 pounds. Ooh, that's a big yeah. one. Right? That's a big one, yeah. And, you know, the halibut are still biting. I mean, it's just, you know, like I said last time I was on, it was, you know, where can you go and jump on a ponga and catch a limited yellowtail in the morning, take them back, chill out for a little bit, go back out, have fun with bass for three or four hours, and then turn around and kick it and go out for Dorado. And if that's not happening for you, go in there and fish that halibut and some white sea bass, maybe, you know, get a big grouper and, uh, where else can you do that in a day? Totally. I agree. That's man. so cool. I agree. H- how are guys catching those sea bass, Jeff? You know, they're they're uh, they're dropper looping kind of, you know, or a reverse, I guess, like Carolina rig where you got a trap rig sometimes on the bottom fishing for halibut and you're just drifting around and you know, those fish will swim around a lot. You know, they got tails. You know, there's not one particular place, but uh in some cases, uh, you know, with a, a heavier you know, sinking jig with a, a mackerel pinned on it and just get it down to the bottom, get it up about four feet and, and hang on. You never yeah. know what you're going to get. How yeah. cool. Okay, well, great. I mean, certainly fun. I know that's a – the you go there because the yellowtail fishing is incredible. You go there because the population of calico bass is second to none. You know, you go there for the great service and the great times, but that is one thing people always say, oh, I want to catch a white sea bass. I want to get – you know, and that uh, – we, we hear it a lot when guys come into the shop to get themselves all rigged up. That's always on the back burner of their mind is a big sea bass. And nice to know that, that, uh, that that's in play as well right now. Yeah. And, you know, the, the, the season's been fantastic. It's still only, I think, geez, bros, he's got like five or six trips left. And uh, season, the, the, you know, having the two lodges, we just finished up the lodge two. So now we're just down to lodge one right now oh, okay. for the next uh, four to six weeks and it went fantastic so she's working on the extended schedule now for for lodge two and already taking reservations and bookings into to next year for 2023 so uh the good news is uh, if you haven't and you want to and you want to get down there and you got a little extra time we still have some spots open especially at the trip on the 26th through the 31st and actually could be going back down again with a friend of mine and sneaking in one more trip but uh she's got a couple of others that are open that have a few spots on them. So if you're thinking and you're wishing, you know, grab your gear and, and get on down. It's uh, it's not something you're going to ever forget once you get down there. No doubt, man. Well said. Great report, Jeff. Appreciate it very much. Uh, if somebody wants to grab that last spot, 26th through the 31st on uh, on that open trip, how do we do it? Sure. You get a hold of Rosie. Uh, matter of fact, she's down at the border now doing a return trip. And uh, you can reach her on her cell phone. And that number is 619 772 seven five seven zero she's always answering the phones uh even up till late in the evenings but um give her a holler and make sure you're talking to her if you're not talking to rosie you're talking to the wrong group and you uh, you can also go online with sedrosportfishing.com and you can take a look at what's still left on the schedule and uh call a buddy and make a reservation and get out there great job jeff excellent report glad to hear they're still biting at the island we'll look forward to talking to you next week got it guys have a great weekend thanks buddy yeah. All man, right. That sounds like fun. Let's hit up our surf guru. Gundy's on the line. What's up, Gundy? I know it's always Corey's favorite. Hey, what's morning. going on, guys? <laughs> yeah. Good morning, Gundy. Yeah, it's still a little bit of a struggle. You know, we had some strong, the, the full moon, we had good tides. So it, we moved out a lot of that red tide, but still streaky water. You know, like, like I said, a lot cleaner, but not ideal. Uh, more red tide to the south. Uh, the water, though, maintains, you know, 70 degrees, so it's the right temperature. Uh, the guys are still spotting a lot of the Corbina. It's just been a real scratchy bite. Uh, on a positive note, uh, the off-color, off-color water is drawing in bait, and so on several of the piers we had uh, the Bonita popped up and then a lot of thresher sharks in the shallows. So going forward, this is really good. You know, it's always an important component of excellent fall fishing is having the bait around so this could work in our favor in the long term it's just a little struggle right now and i I think as this week plays out we'll we'll clean up uh the catch of the week i'd say was a a gentleman fishing uh squid up off santa barbara had two legal white sea bass 28 and the 30 inch but uh from there south though it's struggle small fish small croakers you know small perch so we'll see it bounce back it's just a matter of conditions and they are improving every day 
Wow. I mean, I'll take that, that. Yeah, right? That squid thing. And Gundy, I wonder if they're uh, maybe fishing a whole squid, right? Yeah. Wow. Yep, absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, the, those sea bass have been in and out all, all summer up there. And it's cooler conditions, you know, and some of those are south-facing beaches. So the west swell that, that's kind of screwed things up further south hasn't had an influence, you know. And that's something, you know, as a surf angler you want to consider uh, is the, the direction, the, how the beach faces, because some of those those beaches that don't face into those swells or are protected are can still be fishable. And that was the case here where that water, that, those south-facing beaches moving out west towards Santa Barbara and everything have, have still held up despite, you know, the poor fishing down below. So... Just, just hang in there. I, I don't think this thing's over by a long shot. Yeah, by like all it. means, man. That's great information. And I know that uh, when we reach the fall here, water temp drops a couple degrees, and then, man, that yep. surf perch starts moving in, and it's like good times. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and uh, if that, that bait, that's a huge component. You know, we could have very good bonita fishing here. If that bait hangs out, thresher sharks, that's a good sign, you know. And, the, you know, you know this, the calico bass in the fall, sometimes you get those lunkers get in the shallows on the reefs when you get those real nice days. So, yeah, the potential's real good. You just got to hang in there. Absolutely. And that, uh, that red tide is streaky usually, and maybe uh, a mile down the coast it could be completely clear, but it's a definitely a good thing to keep an eye on. Uh, on yeah, you know, like – like San Clemente, uh, uh, there's like three different bluff spots I'll go on, and I'll just bring my seven by fifties and scout the beach. I could see that's clean that stretch, and uh, you know that's the thing you have to do when you have overcast. A little harder to identify the water clarity, but those little things might help you push you in the right direction, find some cleaner water in situations like this. Yeah, good stuff, guys. Yeah, rad. Gunny. All right, gentlemen, good show. Great report, and as always, appreciate it. We'll look forward to talking to you next Sunday. Have a nice week, guys. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. Well, that's going to wrap us up, Corey. Yeah, and uh, for everything you need for surf fishing, go to surffishtackle.com. And we're going to be right back on Let's Talk Hook Up. More for Rick, myself, and just having a great time. We're going to be right back on Let's Talk Hook Up app, the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. Your vacation bucket list can't be completed without visiting the Katmai Lodge, Alaska this summer. A world-class wilderness fishing paradise on the banks of the famed Alagnac River. Get in the action fishing for all five species of Pacific salmon. King, sockeye, chum, coho, plus trophy-sized rainbow trout. Arctic grayling in Dolly Varden, both in the Alagnac and nearby waters. Katmai Lodge's Coast Guard and CPR certified guides are fly fishing fanatics and know how to help you reel them in, ensuring your days are fish-filled while you enjoy freshly prepared snacks and barbecued lunches on the river. Back at the lodge, enjoy fireside appetizers and refreshments each afternoon. Delicious dinner prepared by the lodge's exceptional chef. Take a quick fly-out trip to Brooks Falls in Katmai National Park for world-renowned bear watching. And check out our trout fishing specials at katmai.com. That's K-A-T-M-A-I.com. Katmai.com. Turner's Outdoorsman, Southern California's number one shooting, hunting, and fishing tackle retailer since 1971, is right in your neighborhood. Now with stores throughout Southern, Central, and Northern California, no one does it better. Turner's Outdoorsman brings you the best prices and selection, plus a knowledgeable staff that will help make your day on the water or in the field more fun. Stop by your neighborhood Turner's Outdoorsman. To find the location nearest you, check the web at turners.com and sign up for special deals and more. If you're into saltwater fishing, listen to this. Saturday, November 5th, it's Tackle Day at Fisherman's Landing in San Diego. Hi, this is Doug Kern. We are pulling out all the stops on this one. Over 20 tackle manufacturers reps like Shimano and Power Pro. Check out all the Shimano and Power Pro product we have and talk to the Shimano and Power Pro guys about the best run reel for your trip. Back by popular demand, the Shimano Tranks Casting Contest. Cast a Shimano Tranks 500 and a Shimano Terramar 90H 
rod and show your surface iron casting skill. You'll see the perfect rod to handle tough fish is Terramar from Shimano. The secret? TC4 blank construction. Match your Shimano Terramar rod with a Shimano Tranks 500 reel. The X-Ship and HEG technologies combine to provide massive cranking power with a smooth and effortless retrieve. It's our biggest sale of the year, Tackle Day at Fisherman's Landing. Unbelievable pricing on tackle, clothing, accessories, and more. Saturday, November 5th. One of the dream trips for most anglers is Alaska. There are so many lodges, how do you make a choice? It's easy. Choose the one most Let's Talk Hookup listeners return to time after time. Kingfisher Charters in Sitka, Alaska. No one does it better than Kingfisher Charters. They offer the best service, the most comfortable accommodations, fantastic food, and the finest charter captains in Sitka. All for the ultimate value. One visit and you will understand why nobody beats Kingfisher Charters. Sitka is famous for some of the best runs of salmon in Alaska. And if giant Alaskan halibut is your target. The expert captains at Kingfisher Charters know the hot spots and can put you on a fish of a lifetime. Plenty of rockfish and huge lingcod are there too. And when it comes to fish processing, the best in Alaska is Kingfisher Charters. It's all included in your package. In fact, everything is included except tips. It is truly amazing how the Kingfisher crew continues the quality of service they deliver year after year. Kingfisher Charters, 800-727-6136 or check kingfishercharters.com. Safe travel should always include travel insurance. This is Bob Dawson at Dawson & Associates. We offer many different plans from one-year plans to single-trip plans. Traveling twice or more a year, an annual plan will cover most every trip that you make. Also, if you get injured on a trip, it'll fly you back home or fly you to a hospital of your choice, and it's worldwide coverage once you're 100 miles from home. So call me at 619-990-3068 or go to safariglobaltravel.com. 